This podcast is sponsored by Lightens. Lightens, your best source for OE quality automotive and heavy duty accessory drive tensioning devices. We know tensioners because we invented them. John Lucier, welcome to Drive Time, sponsored by Lightens. That's great. Yes, thank you for having me. We're glad to have you, and thank you as the president of Tendeco and head of the Lightens brand. Thank you for being our sponsor of AMN Drive Time. You're welcome. Happy to be here. John, Lightens Automotive Group has an inter interesting history, known as the inventor of the tensioner. Can you give our viewers and listeners a brief history of the company and explain the relationship between Lightens and Tendico? Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, so, so Lightens was uh, uh, founded in 1979 by an Austrian immigrant, um, and uh, he actually invented the split spun pulley technology. Before that technology existed, pulleys were many. They were cast. They were cast iron and machined, which made it not only heavy but uh, relatively expensive to manufacture. Hence, why there were all the drives back then were, were, were V-belt pulley systems. So they had two and three belts per, per engine. Uh, with the advent of that technology being developed, uh, it, it allowed then the automakers now to go to what is now known as the poly-V or multi-belt, multi-rib belt system, uh, which meant that now you could, instead of having three belts on your drive, now you have one belt. Hence, but by going with one belt, your, your belt is considerably longer than, than, than having three shorter ones, which meant that now tensioning the drive with a longer belt, because due to stretch and wear, had to be done you know, very often. And so Lighten saw a need for needing to have a, a ten, an auto tensioning device that would allow you to have um, uh, a drive system that didn't require you to constantly tension it yourself. Hence the invention of the accessory drive tensioner. And um, uh, it, we've it started on the Ford Mustang in 1979. Uh, we've subsequently then also invented the mechanical timing belt tensioner for timing drives in 1984. Uh, our company, we, we like to pride ourselves as being a company of innovation. And so uh, uh, just to give you another example of what another innovative product that we've developed has been the overrunning alternator decoupler, which is a, a clutch pulley for alternators. Uh, back in the day when alternators were 80 amps small, relatively small machines, um, it, it, uh, it was, didn't require a lot of, uh, uh, in other words, the rotational mass inertia of those, of those machines was relatively low. Compared to today's bigger machines, which are you know, uh, 240 amp, 280 amp alternators as a result of all the infotainment systems on, on vehicles, now they require quite a large rotational mass inertia. Uh, what happens is that the, as the engine fires, it transmits tor torsional vibrations to, through the belt to the complete drive, and, and the, the uh, accessory drive, or excuse me, the alternator being the worst culprit because of such a big machine, has a tendency to want to do its own thing. So what, with, we, with the advent of the decoupler, it decoupled the alternator from the, from the drive, but at the same time, we have a torsion spring inside which absorbs those torsional vibrations. So uh, we started that in, in, in mass production on the 2001 minivan um, and, uh, uh, you know, 160 million units later, uh, we're almost, uh, we're on 65% of all production vehicles in, in, in the U.S. John, we're in a time of remarkable technological advancements in vehicles today. You kind of touched on it. What are the vehicle technologies you're keeping a close eye on today that will most likely impact your business in the near future? Well, it's, you're absolutely correct. I mean, you know, obviously being in, in power transmission through belts is, is certainly uh, our core business, although we've continued to, to innovate in addition to our core products that we offer, which is tensioners and idlers for accessory drive systems. We have uh, developed a, a, a water pump, for example, an electronic water pump, electromechanical water pump. Basically, it's driven by the belt, but it, 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 it engages and disengages electronically. So uh, we've taken some of these technologies in, into, the, into, the, into the future. Um, we uh, have developed on uh, hybrid systems, for example, which are 
also becoming quite popular. Uh, a hybrid tensioner, uh, these are again utilized uh, on, on uh, what they call uh, motor generating units, which is a, a, it's like a large, we were talking about it being a big alternator. Yeah. This is a massive alternator. What it does is it's, it serves as a boost for power on your drive. Uh, it, it drives, I have a, a new F-150 uh, and it's got a hybrid engine in it uh, with, a, with a large uh, motor generating unit. So when you first start out driving the car, it's, it's in electric mode. And then eventually when you get past 30 miles an hour or whatever, it, it, it switches into, into a combustion engine. Um, it also uh, uh, kicks in when, you're, when you hit the gas. So it gives you that extra boost in horsepower. So it's really quite innovative. And we've got our tensioner on that drive. And, and we've similar you know, developments on, uh, with other OEs as well on, on hybrid, uh, hybrid engines. Uh, we're, we're also working on um, uh, BEVs or battery electric vehicles. Um, one of the biggest things that uh, we see as, a, as an issue with, uh, with battery electric vehicles is the longevi long longevity or the length of life of a, of a lithium ion battery. Um, batteries don't like to see either too hot or too cold. Uh, both of those things will kill the life of a battery. So what we're working on is thermal management systems to go ahead and control the temperature range at which those batteries operate so that they're neither too hot nor too cold. So John, I understand that you were born in Argentina. You studied in, you studied in Venezuela as a young man. Mm -hmm. You're still a young man, should I say as a younger man. <laughs> You're too kind. Tell us about that and how does that international experience that's in your DNA help you today running the global business that you're in? Well, um, it, it is, thanks for asking. Um, you know, my, my mom and dad uh, actually met at the University of Michigan, and my dad got a job with, um, with Kaiser, Kaiser Fraser, which is, if you, if you look way back in time, uh, they bought the Willys Overland Jeep uh, brand, and were manufacturing Jeeps here in North America. And when my dad got a job with them, he, they offered him a position down in Argentina in 1955, to open the first automotive plant in South America. And so uh, he was gonna, he said to my mom, we'll go for two years, stayed for 22. Wow. So, so um, I had a brother and a sister that were born here in the US and then the rest of us, which are four of us, so six total kids, uh, the rest of us were born down in Argentina. Um, he then subsequently took a job in, in, uh, in Venezuela, uh, which is where I did my junior high uh, uh, you know, years and uh, yeah, and moved back finally when I did high school. I did it in Long Island, New York. But it, it, you know, to answer your question on how, it, how does that help me? Well, I'll tell you what. First of all, learning a, a, another language um, was, was, was huge. It has uh, helped you, me greatly. You, you speak French, uh, Spanish? Spanish, French, and English. Got it. So um, all those things have, have certainly opened doors for us and uh, for me personally in my, in my automotive career. Um, and uh, it's helped me a lot into understanding other cultures and how that might benefit and learn to work together. Obviously, it's a very important thing. Also, I wanted to mention is that um, uh, having grown up in South America and then subsequently moved to the United States, I learned, I learned early on uh, the, what it meant to be made in the United States because that's, it, it translates it into quality around the world. It's, it, it's amazing. And another observation I'd like to make is that uh, Having moved to the United States, I understand, and now I understand, that this is really the greatest country in terms of opportunities. It, 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 if, a, if you can dream it, you can do it in this country. And that's absolutely amazing. I can't say the same in every other country. Absolutely. So I need to know, of the six kids, which number are you in the birth I'm order? the last one. Oh, you're the, the sixth of six. I'm six of six, Got correct. It. I'm the fifth of five. Well, there you go. So we're, we're the babies, right? That's, yes, we've been spoiled. <laughs> so staying with the topic of global business, John, how is Lighten's managing the seemingly continuous supply chain issues that are going on today? Well, um, we've got plants all over the world, and and we've we recognized that, um, for example, our when we had when the, the Trump duties took place back three three or more years ago. Uh, you know, we, we anticipated that coming and we wanted to go ahead and, 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 and import as much as we could of the Chinese product that we get out of our Chinese plant. And, and so we were bulking up back then on inventory 
just to try to evade that, those extra costs. Um, we further saw that, that um, you know, that was going to be a requirement with, you know, with COVID happening and, and uh, all the supply chain issues that exist now currently throughout the world, including uh, the, the logistical uh, uh, impacts of, of high costs of, of, uh, of, of freight uh, worldwide. So, we've, so we, we bulk up our inventory, and I, I assume that a lot of other companies are doing the same thing. One of the advantages of having plants throughout the world is that we can go ahead, we've, we've got redundant manufacturing facilities. In other words, what we, what we build in China, might, we have a part that we also build in India, or we build in, in our German facility, or two plants in, in Canada, or Brazil. Uh, and so we're able to go ahead and, and switch those around uh, that, that, to alleviate that supply chain issue. So, John, tell us a little bit about what differentiates Lightens in the marketplace. For example, what is the R&D process like at your place? Well, you know, being an OE supplier, uh, uh, first and foremost, we, 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 we go through all the rigorous uh, quality standards that are required uh, from a supplier to an OE. Um, we're, we're also, uh, as, I meant, as I, I mentioned, we're... We, we tell ourselves as being an innovative company. We've developed uh, testing methodologies that are actually, uh, you know, recognized by our OE suppliers as being really second to none. Uh, it, it, they, they emulate real life conditions. And so they actually utilize our test facilities to test other suppliers so that, uh, 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 because they like our, our processes that much. Um, you know, it, it, the, it, it, just to add to that, um, for example, the products that you're getting from us in the aftermarket that are manufactured by Lightens are, undergo the same strict uh, uh, manufacturing guidelines that we use for the OEs. So um, obviously we can't use the same tooling from, from the OEs, but we, we manufacture duplicate set of tools based on the same designs. The components are identical and we run them down the OE line. So the part that you're going to get from us uh, is, is chances are going to be the same as the, what you take off the vehicle. John, just circling back for a moment about uh, supply chain issues. How is that working for you guys in terms of fill rates to the aftermarket? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's been a tough, uh, difficult task, but our, we have a crack team that, that has uh, managed our, our supply chain, uh, I think, uh, impeccably. We, we, even through these, these very tough times, We've managed to uh, have 90% or better fill rates to our customers throughout this, uh, throughout this very difficult period. So, uh, you know, if you, it, the, the big thing is for us, if you don't have the part, you can't sell it. I don't care what price it is. Uh, if you have it, it you're, they're bound to come to you. John, you talked a lot about the R&D and the quality of your products. Maybe you could just elaborate for our audience just a little more about your OE heritage and what that means for the aftermarket. Well, in the aftermarket, uh, we've got our, our tagline is uh, uh, OE is in our DNA. Um, and certainly, we, we believe we have the purest line of OE products in the marketplace. Uh, you know, we don't, we, we're not OE to everybody, right? So, so obviously, we, we can't manufacture everything and call it, uh, you know, us the, the OE source. Um, but if, if, uh, if Lightens is the OE source, we get it obviously from our parent company. Uh, if, if one of our other competitors is the OE source, then we buy it from them. So you add that, you know, we're buying it from, you know, uh, 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 several sources to create, let's say, a 94% pure OE line. So that when you're changing that, that, that tensioner off your vehicle, you're replacing it with exactly the same OE part. Got it. So, John, I'm, uh, uh, I'm sure over your career you've done quite a bit of traveling worldwide. Mm -hmm. Are there any memorable or funny stories or events or dinners or customer meetings or vendor meetings that strike you as especially memorable? Well, I'll tell you what, there's, there's been a lot of horrific <laughs> moments that... Uh... But I'll, I'll concentrate on, on maybe a funny one. Um, you know, I, I used to call on Chrysler on the OE side, and I was visiting uh, uh, the Saltillo engine plant in Mexico, and we had, I had gone down with the release engineer from Chrysler, and uh, 
who were down there doing, working, we're showing how to do installation of our product on, on, the, on the two liter engine. And as it so happens that my competitor who was on that engine at the time in which I wanted to go ahead and steal the, the business from was also there. And, and I didn't know this until after we all were leaving and we got to the airport and realized that he was there. And so um, I can't recall exactly, but I believe they oversold the flight. So there was only, when we got to the, to the airport, there was only one seat left. So the, the airline uh, personnel said, okay guys, there's one seat left, uh, uh, you know, uh, who's gonna go? And my competitor said, I'll go. And so my customer, the Chrysler engineer looked at me, I looked at him, he listened to say, I got the business. <laughs> <laughs> Great story. Yeah, so, Great yeah, story. It's, it's, but it's, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's plenty of those, you know, it's, it's, you know, back in the days when, when I would travel down, because I was in charge of all of Latin America for my company. And so I'd go, I'd go into these, these little boon towns in, in, in Brazil. And, and back in the, the, the late 80s and early 90s, it, uh, you know, they, they cancel flights all the time. And, and so you'd have these meetings that you would establish from, from, from the U.S. and you'd travel all the way down to South America only to find out, oh, guess what, they're canceled. But, you know, it was, it was you know, you had to take it with a, with a grain of salt, that's that was the that was the way people did business back down you know down there at the time and and yeah so uh, we we did a lot of those. Fantastic. So John, as we wrap up, we're gonna do something we call the lightning round. Okay. So I'm gonna give you a couple of words and just off the top of your head, you're gonna give us an answer. All right. All right. All right. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Now early bird. Back maybe 30 years ago, different story. When you lived in South America, you were a <laughs> night owl. Exactly, exactly. Summer or winter? Oh, definitely summer. Town or country? Um, how about small town? Okay, perfect. Invisibility or immortality? No, I don't want to live forever. I guess invisible. Got it. Cash or contactless? Pay, pain. Oh yeah, no cash. Yeah, it's it's. I'm all about credit cards and and Venmo and I, I am up to speed on that. I, I mean, I, I'm I may be old, but I, when it comes to paying, I'm I'm definitely up to speed. Got it. Ford or import ride. And by the way, I didn't know the answer to the early question, but I think we know. Yeah, Ford for sure. Yep, Got it. Yep, yep. Are you a Ford guy forever? No, I mean I like I said I, I called on Chrysler for uh, you know twenty odd years, so. I drove, uh, I think I owned 14 Chryslers. So I figured it was time for a change. Got it. Detroit Tigers or Detroit Lions? Oh, I have to be a Lions fan. I mean, although, you know, it's, it's a diehard. It's, 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 you know, you're, you're, you're doomed uh, only because it's, it's been so many years since we've had a winning season. But, but uh, I, I'm, a, I'm much more of a football fan than a baseball fan, even though my, my – my uh, oldest boy is a, is a baseball player and, and spent a lot of time on a, on a, on a baseball diamond. Uh, yeah, football, I enjoy that. Were you happy with your quarterback when he won the Super Bowl with the Rams? Well, I'll That's tell you. That's a little I, bittersweet, right? Yeah, especially when he's got that new ad out there that says, you know, uh, life-changing, right? Yeah. So, but, you know, it's, it goes to show you, it's just a matter of, uh, of, of, of having the right team, the right mixture to, 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 to be a winning formula. And... Uh, I'm happy for him, you know. I'm just hoping that we can recreate that in, in Detroit here in the near future. Favorite Motown artist? Um, um, geez. I must say I like the Supremes. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a, yeah, I'll have to think about that one. Okay. Either Supremes or the Temptations, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Or the Four Tops, the Four Tops from Detroit? Yeah, you, to be honest, I didn't grow up in, in oh, Detroit, okay. so it, for me, Got it's, it. it's a little tough to... Got it. Yeah. So, I know you're a bit of a foodie. Uh, seafood or steak? Oh, I'm a, I'm a meat and potatoes guy. Although, I like seafood, but, you know, if I had to choose, yeah, meat, for sure. Okay, last one. I mean, you're obviously a fit, lean guy, but <laughs> ice cream or pie? Ice cream. Ice Got cream, it. for sure. John, it's great to have you on AMN Drive Time, sponsored by Lightens, and thank you again, and it's great to have you with us. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been, it's been great fun. Really enjoyed it. Okay, great.
This podcast is sponsored by Lightens. Lightens, your best source for OE quality automotive and heavy duty accessory drive tensioning devices. We know tensioners because we invented them.